So, you really want to know how to make the best thumbnail, don't you? Well, let me tell you, it's not as hard as you think. Let's get down to business. There's no fancy schmancy settings for these projects. All you need to do is make sure it's set to 1080p resolution, and you don't need to worry about the frame rate at all. Just click and create your new project, and the default settings should be enough to make your thumbnail. Next, you need to drag in all your different assets that you plan to use inside your thumbnail, such as your subject, your background, all the different effects inside your project. And unlike Photoshop, where you just click and drag your layers inside of your viewport, you need to click and drag them into your timeline just like any other video project. I started with my subject, and this is going to be a picture of Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet because, you know, He's a pretty big deal. After dragging him into your timeline, go up to the inspector and adjust the X and Y coordinates, the zoom. I like to follow the triangle rule when I'm positioning my subjects. Usually, you want to have less than three subjects inside your thumbnail, and you want to position them like a triangle. So that way, it's easy for the viewer to know what exactly they're looking at. So I positioned my Thanos character on the right side of my thumbnail. Next, I dragged in my backgrounds and my layers. I went over to the inspector and adjust the overlay, so that way I was able to play around with some of the transparency and also get a pretty good look out of these lightning overlays that I was using. Afterwards, I went through my backgrounds and found a few more layers that I could throw on top of this Thanos character. I adjusted the composite mode to fit my needs and afterwards I dragged in my text plus. Now you may be asking, why not use text instead of text plus? Well, what's the difference? When you're making your thumbnail, you really need to have all of the features inside text plus instead of just your text. Text plus works inside of Fusion and Fusion has more customizable features. But if you want to, you could use text instead of text plus. I just prefer text plus because it has more features. I like to choose the PT Sans font as well as making it bold and or italicized so that way it just gives a little bit more variety. It's still clean and pleasing to look at. You don't want to choose something like a typewriter font or something nice and extra squiggly. It's not fancy. It's not fancy. It's not professional either. Believe me. Because <laughs> I'm a professional, you know. After positioning that bad boy, I realized that I needed a background to go behind my subject other than these big lightning effects. So I went to pexels.com and brought in a space background because Thanos is from outer space and you know, it just makes a lot more sense. The next thing I did is using the alt key, I clicked and dragged on my text plus in order to duplicate it. And then I added a little tweaking to some of the arrangement inside Resolve to get the best look possible. In order to have a more visually intriguing way of moving your items around, click on the overlay button in the bottom left hand corner of your viewport and this will allow you to click and drag on the actual object itself instead of using all these wheels and sliders inside the inspector, which I know that can be a little frustrating. To use. I soon realized that this lightning overlay that I was using was not bold enough for the thumbnail that I was trying to create. So I went into the fusion page, took out the delta keyer, and proceeded to key out the black background behind the lightning strikes. After that, I made some adjustments to the text plus by going over to the shading, clicking the red outline, and adjusting some of the settings inside the inspector, such as the opacity, and even adding a gradient to the red outline. And then I decided to delete the other one and do the same thing by holding all and dragging the stroke to text plus. Make sure you you also add drop shadow because drop shadow adds a lot of depth to your thumbnails. In order to cut out the Thanos character, go into the color page, grab the pen mask, and proceed to draw around your character, making sure that you really take your time with this one. Next thing you want to do in your node tree, right click and select add an alpha output, and then click the blue triangle and drag it onto the alpha output. That will cut out your character. The next thing I did was adjust the curves, the saturation, and then repositioned it on the screen to get the best look. I realized that the Infinity Gauntlet needed a bit more shine to it, so I went online to try to find a light leak, saved it to my downloads, removed the black background with the Delta Keyer again, and then positioned it over the Infinity Gauntlet. Afterwards, I added the DaVinci Resolve logo, added a drop shadow to both the logo and my character, and then I also brightened up his face a little bit to make sure he stands out as the main subject of the thumbnail. Now for the most important part. Go into your color page, right click on your image, and select grab still. Then over in your gallery, right click on the still that you just saved and export it as a JPEG or PNG for your thumbnail. And there you go. Simple, easy thumbnail in DaVinci Resolve. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.